Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So in this video I'm going to show you how you can install a lot of cool libraries that you're going to need to, let's say for example, create a game or to create a, even a game engine or whatever This is, I think, pretty essential This is my own pick Like there's a lot of libraries right there But this is my own selection So let's go so basically instead of installing all those libraries whenever you start a new project that you need all those libraries for i just have created for you just a little small cmake interface library that you could basically uh, download in your projects and link to and there you go you got access to all the libraries you need so if we see here you could see that we have sdl sdl3 we have sdl image we have sdl ttf basically uh, sdl is basically for windowing threading like it just contains a lot of cool stuff. like anything that you're not gonna find in the other libraries you're gonna find in sdls like if you're working with c like there's no way you won't use sdl like you just need all of it <laughs> all right and then there's sdl image so you can load uh, all sorts of images pngs maybe even psds i don't know G jpeg webp and stuff like that and there's also a lot of options tons of options they could probably customize there's also sdl ttf uh, which is for font loading and also for rendering fonts there is also sdl mixer and by the way sdl also allows you to uh, like for example manipulate images uh, at, like using a software I mean you could also use uh, you know use accelerated render of SDL uh, but you usually want to create your own render using Vulkan or so or OpenGL or whatever in this case it's gonna be open uh, it's gonna be Vulkan uh, there's also SDL mixer well SDL does have some audio but it have the bare minimum audio that you may need like very low level and then there's SDL mixer which would help you with creating more advanced audio stuff and then there is Vulkan header now we're getting into the Vulkan stuff right so Vulkan header like basically if you're not gonna be like you could just go with this and just create a whole game engine without any well not really whole game engine like yeah basically because sdl render doesn't have shaders at least not yet though they're working in sdl3 they're working on a gpu api which should hopefully allow that and then basically sdl would be perfect for that but otherwise you're gonna need a graphics api and in this case it's gonna be vulcan because pretty much uh, face it like vulcan is pretty hard and not pretty hard but basically very verbose and very hard to get into the mindset uh, of it uh, but like the time that it saves you later on when it comes to, like Vulkan debugging and the Vulkan API and the Vulkan performance and control is just out of this world like you cannot get it with OpenGL OpenGL modern OpenGL is nice but yeah like bruh <laughs> i just love the vulcan layers the vulcan debugging utilities and all that cool stuff especially the api is very consistent like at some point you just can actually guess the name of the functions and the structs basically it's just very amazing uh also there is spurvy headers this is basically now since vulcan it doesn't take GLSL like actual shader source code it takes the bytecode the shader bytecode so for example let's say you have GLSL source code or HLSL source code that you could basically use uh, this GLSL lang which actually needs this spurvy headers and spurvy tools to actually go ahead load the file at runtime and compile it at runtime because uh, in like OpenGL which gives the chance for the driver to compile their shaders which is a source of a lot of problems because in some vendor they may be more relaxed when it comes to requirements so it would compile just fine although uh, your shader isn't fully conformant uh, but then on another vendor your shader suddenly doesn't work or something like that basically or there's some bug in the driver uh, shader compile so in Vulkan you actually just give the spurvy uh, spurvy shader code which is very similar to assembly basically so it's basically the bare minimum that you need to give to the driver and then basically the driver takes that spur v and actually map it to whatever hardware instructions they have and stuff like that 
But yeah, basically instead of having a whole compiler inside of the driver, inside of every single driver, and you are at the mercy of how that driver uh, creator have done have done their compiler, now you just feed into Vulkan the Spur-V, which you get by translating uh, the GLSL or the HLSL or whatever code into Spur-V. As long as you can get it into Spur-V, it, it would work. Well, there is some other stuff, but anyways, let's not get into the crazy details. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to say is... Yeah, you could also choose between two things, either compiling shaders at runtime or compiling shaders bef like, at, like before, basically. So if you want at runtime, you're going to need either GLSL Lang library or Shader C library. Shader C is very, very huge. There's also DirectX compiler, uh, but that's also crazy. <laughs> so you're probably your best bet uh, when it comes to uh, runtime compiling is probably GLSL Lang. So I included this here, uh, though this is mainly, uh, you know, targeted at C development, but Sadly, GLSL Lang, I don't think it does have a C binding, so you'll have to include some source code, some C++ source file to create the binding yourself. And then from your C code, you could just call into it. If you're using C++, well, you could just use it, basically. Uh, and as you can see here, this is the tag. And by the way, I'm using CPM to manage packages, as you can see, to download it and manage them. Basically, here, I'm just downloading CPM, basically. Um, and then uh, then I'm using CPM to download everything else, all my dependencies, basically. So yeah, where I think we're done. The Spare V tools basically contains the compiler, a shader compiler, I think also a shader disassembler and stuff like that, whatever. If you don't need the runtime shaders, like if you just want to compile the shaders beforehand into Spur-V and then in your program just load the Spur-V directly, then you, then you don't actually need any of these guys, basically. Uh, you could just remove them or something like that. But anyways, or just leave them. You may never know when you need them. Anyways, so CPM add package. Okay, so we also have Volk. Now the thing is with Vulkan is that Volk, Vulkan is just an API. It's not an actual library like let's say SDL or something like that. Um, so what happens is that every driver can like actually implements that API. So as the user, you only need to know the contract, which is the API between you and the driver. So like the API just tells each party how to use the li how to use the library, what to expect, etc. And both parties like the driver creator, the driver developer actually have to abide by that. And also the user of that API have to abide by that. Uh, but either way, so now the problem is if you have, let's say multiple GPUs or like, let's say you have a dedicated GPU and, a, and another, like, uh, an integrated GPU in your CPU or something like, like that, what happens is that you're going to have multiple drivers. So you're going to have like, let's say an Intel driver, Nvidia driver, if you even have more GPUs, you like maybe have even an AMD <laughs> driver, which is crazy, but just for the sake of example, um, basically you have a lot of physical devices uh, in your system. So you have a lot of implementations of, of Vulkan because each um, each vendor have their own implementation of Vulkan and sometimes even each model depends pretty much and also depends on the version of the Vulkan implementation and the Vulkan API. So yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff, but what you need to know is that what we do actually, we need to load the loiter of Vulkan. So like you load a DLL or basically a shared library or an SO file in, in uh, Linux which basically goes ahead and takes care of all that weird stuff for you, like picking the right driver and device and stuff like that, which you could basically just link statically to it. But the problem with that is that you're going to have uh, a problem. First of all, you cannot have like, let's say a fallback render. Let's say if Vulkan doesn't exist, if that shared library doesn't exist, Vulkan-1.dll. If you link statically, then what happens is that, um, 
yeah, it just tells the user that, you know, Vulcan-1.dll not found, and yeah, that's it. Like, you have no chance to do anything and not to even, like, tell the user what's going on or how to go or how to fix it or whatever. So what the user could do, he could just go to the internet, find or try to find, like, how to download Vulcan-1.dll and then he's gonna install a virus and then... <laughs> You see the boy? <laughs> of course, this is exaggerated, depends on the user. Uh, but yeah, he got the point. So that's why you actually want to dynamically load it, the library at runtime using DL Open in Linux, for example, or in Unix in general, and using Lloyd library in uh, Windows. Uh, but otherwise, if you have SDL, uh, which I would assume you have, <laughs> and I would assume you're using because it's just super useful, uh, there's SDL Lloyd object, which you could actually use to Lloyd a uh, shared library in a cross-platform way, which is very cool. Um, so, yeah. Although, of course, the actual library name actually changes from one to one. But the thing is, as I said, the actual implementation isn't in that dynamic library. It's actually in the dynamic library of the driver. But we don't know the driver what it is. So that dynamic library that you actually load is the actual Vulkan loader, which manages all that stuff for you. And that basically takes care of, let's say, instance creation, um, it's going to take care of validation layers and stuff like that. It's going to take a care of finding the actual drivers, finding the physical devices, etc, etc, etc. Stuff like that, basically. Uh, but then at some point, instead of every time going through the loiter to call a function, because every time you call a function through the loiter itself, it's going to figure out what device are you talking about? <laughs> because at, at some point you're going to choose a physical device and you're going to actually create a logical device. Uh, and at that point, the driver is very well known. You know exactly where the driver is. But the loader, every time you call it directly, what's going to happen is that you have to figure out which device are you talking about, which driver are you talking about, which instance are you talking about, etc. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of indirections right there. Uh, which is going to be bad for performance. So for performance reasons, what we do is there is like uh, there is multiple functions to uh, optimize that. But basically, it's called uh, vk get get instance proc address and also or get proc addr. I don't know. And there's also vk get device proc addr. I think. Uh, and basically use these to actually load the function, like especially the VK get device proc ADDR, use it to directly fetch the driver function pointers directly from the driver. So whenever you call into that loaded functions that you'll have loaded using that function, you're just gonna call directly into the driver. You're not gonna go through the loader, which is amazing. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is that most tutorials you're going to find, they're going to enable validation layers uh, programmatically in code, which is super messy and just an accessory if you are on desktop. Uh, you could just use the Vulkan configurator. Uh, well, where is it called? Uh, yeah, uh, let's go to terminal. And by the way, to actually get these tools like the shader, compi the Spur V compiler, GLSLang and shader C and and uh, VK config and stuff like that. You gotta make sure to install the Vulkan SDK. It's pretty easy. Just search in Google for Vulkan SDK. You're gonna know how to install it. Pretty simple. It's just gonna. It's not needed to actually run your Vulkan application. It's just needed because it gives you a lot of cool tools that you could use to assist you in your development of uh, Vulkan. For example, uh, from the Vulkan tools, like if you are auto on uh, Arch Linux like me, you're gonna say pacman s Vulkan Devil, and this would basically uh, install everything you need. Of course, you need sudo there, but it will install everything uh, Vulkan related so you don't really need to install the Vulkan SDK from the uh, their website though you can do that uh, but either way if you call Vicky config as you can see it gives you this guy so what you could do you could actually here instead of programmatically doing that stupid stuff you could just come here and whenever you want to debug like if you don't want to debug just make it that layers fully controlled by Vulkan application and so that 
make sure that there is no layers in the middle between your application and the driver. Uh, but it, when you want to actually debug, let's say you want a validation, which tells you if you're doing something wrong, let's say, and there's also all sorts of validation like synchronization, best practices, and stuff like that. You could also, there's message severity, you could actually manage all this stuff here, which is very, very cool, very useful, uh, which would be very messy programmatically. So this is very amazing. Um, and there's also API dump. Uh, so this basically tells you if you're doing something wrong and there's also API dump which is also very useful which is basically used for let's say to actually see what Vulkan API calls are are there you know and to also what can I say uh, yeah to also see the the arguments that being passed how much time it takes what is the frame that is called in what is the the thread that is called in what are, what are all the arguments that is passed? What it returns? Did it return success or did it return failure? There's all sorts of cool stuff that you can actually uh, explore here. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now for this one. Just wanted to tell you. And there's also this VK cube. Uh, if you want to see to make sure that Vulkan actually runs correctly in your machine, you could just go with VK cube. Uh, of course, you're going to need the Vulkan SDK for that because it's right there and there you go VK cube there you go that's what I'm talking about let's go very nice uh, so that's VK cube uh, all right there is the other one is v Vulcan caps viewer uh, which I sadly don't have because I just have installed it again but basically you have this GPU database that you can find let's see uh, of Vulcan right Vulkan Hardware Database. Now basically, uh, you go ahead, everyone can actually download this uh, this guy right here if you are on Windows, Linux, or Android. And in fact, uh, in Linux, you could probably find some AUR package or something like that. Uh, either way, you install it from here and then you're gonna see all the information about your physical devices, uh, Vulkan-wise, you know, which is very, very useful. I very much also recommend this application and basically if you uh, if the your driver and your physical device doesn't exist in the database you can actually go ahead and apply it and once you apply it it basically would pop up in this uh, database right here which it, all Vulkan developers can actually check out like uh, Windows Linux Android let's say Linux, for example, this specific GPU, uh, this model actually, and this specific GPU, here's the driver, here's the API version, etc, etc. And then you can see what it is, this is a discrete GPU, etc. And you can see the properties. Um, of course, there's no privacy, not, no privacy problems here though, it's just like a, a GPU information, nothing very specific to you. Uh, it's just your GPU related stuff, but yeah As you can see there's a lot of cool properties right here that you could check and see like for example Let's say you want to use some extension in your application But you want to support let's say this platform and this driver etc etc You're gonna see if this extension is supported on that GPU or something like that For example, let's say this GPU right here it supports these extensions, let's say and also, let's say here's the Q families of that GP, etc., etc. Hopefully, I got the point across. Anyway, so that's another tool that is very, very useful. Uh, yeah, the other thing is if I go to my terminal again, uh, what is it called? Yeah, there's Shader C. If you have installed the Vulkan SDK, you're probably going to get it. Uh, it's actually called GLSLC uh, as a command line, though the actual name of the project is Shader C. But there you go, GLSLC, and then you just give it the the shader, etc., etc. You could search it up yourself. I'm just giving you like where to go, kind of like just the <laughs> the start, and then you could just go ahead and Google and search even more about this stuff. Uh, there's also GLSLang, which kind of does similar thing, but Shader C is more advanced, but also much more heavier. Um, but either way, you could actually check out all of this cool stuff. So yeah, pretty much. And of course, GLSL Lang is basically a command line that uses the GLSL line, uh, GLSL Lang library that I actually have included here, basically. 
So yeah, and for Volk, as I've said, it's just for performance and also secondly for to be able to have like let's say a fallback render like maybe you're gonna use the Volk like the SDL render or even the SDL software render or let's say maybe you're gonna just you know quit with the proper message of the to the user or something like that either way you got the point so basically to exit gracefully when Vulkan is not supported and secondly for performance there is the other one is Vulkan memory allocator now there is some like a lot of Vulkan is just boilerplate at first at least at the start of the project so Vulkan memory allocations like if you don't know what you're doing just gonna go with this uh, library just don't even bother you know it's like I mean, sure, go ahead, learn how to do basic things like how to allocate memory, etc. using uh, Vulkan directly, raw Vulkan. Uh, but then you probably, if you want some actual projects, better go with Vulkan Memory Allocator. Don't reinvent the wheel, <laughs> unless if you know what you're doing, of course. Um, so yeah, pretty much. Uh, but it's pretty basic to 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 actually allocate memory in Vulkan but to actually allocate it efficiently it's not very basic <laughs> now when it comes to OpenGL for example a lot of these things are done for you by the driver itself like uh, allocations like when you create a buffer it doesn't really allocate new memory for it at least I don't think so uh, any good driver wouldn't allocate new memory uh, for every buffer you create in OpenGL for example it would probably just allocate one big buffer uh, and then just give you sub allocations and you think it's all a whole buffer. I don't know, I'm not sure, we'll, uh, but that's probably the case, but who knows. Uh, but basically a lot of things that was in the driver right now, you take control of it as the application developer. And yeah, that's, uh, of course they do have a C binding, which is very nice, though it's a C++ library too. So this guy and this guy is a C++ library. I'm not sure about these ones though. Uh, but of course the other ones are C based. Uh, also there is GLM which is a C++ library though I have included here CGLM which is uh, well <laughs> GLM for C kind of. Well it's not a binding I think it's a whole new library but it's basically I think inspired from GLM I think but for, of course for C and there's async this is also a C++ library and this would allow you to basically load all sorts of 3d model formats pretty much like FBX uh, OBJ whatever you name it GLTF otherwise but this is quite big though I mean it's gonna it's I guess it supports 40 formats or something like that I guess uh, it's pretty big um, so if you care about that you probably want to go with something more lightweight maybe like CGL CGLTF or something though I'm always open for contributions and suggestions just open a request or uh, issue or something and tell me what your thoughts are um, so yeah for example there's this CGLTF which would of course not allow you to <laughs> load 40 formats it would allow you to only load GLTF formats and honestly GLTF is probably your best bet when it comes to modern um, assets uh, it's just very very good it's also from the same group that made Vulkan, OpenGL etc so yeah if you want to go that route there you go uh, but if you're going to create an engine you probably want to use something like async which supports more uh, libraries by the way also SDL actually supports loading some basic images I think like BMP or something like that uh, but SDL image basically gives you more stuff like WebP, PNG, JPEG etc and of course by the way all of this stuff since they're all included from CMake they're all very configurable as I'll show you later on you could basically toggle stuff up you could toggle it off etc etc which is very cool uh, what else okay so of course by the way CGLM is for mathematics uh, if you don't know GLM uh, ASIMP is for 3D model loading CMGY yeah so there's also MGY which is a very good immediate GY library uh, it's pretty pretty interesting uh, though here I included the C binding to it 
So although it's a C++ library, but it actually doesn't use like very advanced C++ uh, features though. I think it only uses like overloading and stuff like that. Uh, so it's um, very near to it, I guess. Uh, but anyways, and there's also CPM add package in it. Now in it, I have checked it out. It's like, it have some weird CMake. It didn't work with this kind of, a modern CMake way of doing things. So I had to actually use CPM to just download it. So as you can see, download only true. And then I like this, you use this basically when there is some uh, library that have some weird <laughs> build stuff or doesn't even have a build system at all or something like that. So, hold on, sorry. Um, All right, back, 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 let's go. Okay, so as I said, uh, yeah, pretty much download only. And what I've done here, I actually have set it up, set it up myself and it works. Pretty much it's nothing very complex. I just added library. So if ina added, if it have been added successfully, I just create a new library target called ina. Then I include directories publicly uh, to the include directory from the source directory of that init. And then it could basically do something similar uh, to other libraries like that. Uh, so target sources, there you go, init private, and then I give it the C sources. And that's basically it, and it just works. Let's go. <laughs> and then there's add library. Uh, project name interface target link line. This is for my own thing. So basically for my all my dependencies I like to always put them in one interface target and this is what you're gonna link to if you include my library here Which is called VKSDL. Uh, I would basically as you can see include all of these link links uh, now link libraries is very not a good name it doesn't just link like it's actually kind of like add the whole target like it's includes and stuff it just it's not just like linking the actual library uh, but anyway so as you can see vulcan headers pervy headers uh, volk headers there's also volk uh, static library but it didn't work so well for, i mean it would work but then you may have some problems with inconsistencies between the structs so for, at some point i had the uh, uh, struct overflow uh, of the Volk device thing and in fact even with the Volk headers for some reason I'm not sure it's weird uh, but either way if you have some inconsistencies between the actual uh, Volk source and the Volk header that you include you're gonna have a problem you may have overflow uh, because there is some things that gets included depending on some defines uh, some extensions and stuff like that which just makes it very weird but <laughs> anyways uh, okay so GLSL lang uh, yeah this is basically for shader runtime shader compilation this is the Vulkan memory allocator this is SDL3 let's go SDL3 image mixer TTF for fonts and yeah that's pretty much it um, yeah I'm just linking all these libraries that I've added before and of course this if project is top level basically if the if you are actually editing the library itself instead of just including it in your own project uh it's gonna add this executable which is just a test but if you include it in your own project this test won't be added because the project then wouldn't be top level so yeah that's pretty much it i think now let's go to the next step which is uh, yeah, so there's two things that you could check out afterwards. There is example.cmake. This is all you really need to install all those libraries thanks to my own little interface cmake library. That's pretty much it. That's all the code you need to, to set up all of these in all platforms. I'm not sure about Windows, like uh, it could be some problem with other libraries. It's not my problem though. Uh, but it could be there is a way to actually fix it from my own side but either way if this is not tested on windows so uh, you may have some problem and if you do please make sure to to tell me in the issues to post an issue or to even pull like to push a pull request if you know how to fix it even or you have fixed it uh so yeah uh what I don't think may not work, for example, is SDLTTF. 
maybe at least I can recall that I had some problems with it before though it may be fixed at this point who knows uh, basically it's expecting you to have I think free type library and stuff like that but yeah let me know if this works on Windows or not please so and just post an issue or a comment or whatever anyways so that's basically what it takes to actually uh, install this library in your own projects and then there is this little test this is also very useful because yeah you have all these libraries in your project now but how to even include them <laughs> how to even start with them you know uh, so this is what the test is for the test is not meant to like show you best 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 of practices and is not meant to be complete uh, Vulkan render and <laughs> game engine or something uh, but just meant to like show you how to include stuff how to like th basically the first step into using all those libraries hopefully uh, so yeah here I have this little CPP file this is the only thing that I have in my test this is just to basically because we, we uh, like the Vulkan memory allocator is header only library uh, so you have to include it and then define VK, VMA implementation so it would include the source code and of course you cannot include C++ source code in a C source code so you should make sure to have it in a CPP file just like this here I'm disabling VMA static functions and the dynamic functions because I'm using Volk because I'm loading the functions from the driver and then I'm just going to give them to to the Vulkan memory allocator directly I'm going to give it the pointers function I don't want it to statically link to the library or something like that uh, but yeah, I basically set them both to false. If you're using uh, some, or if you want to use some smaller version, you could say uh, this basically 1.2. If you want 1.3, then you could change this to 3. If you want 0, you could change this to 0, zero basically, and stuff like that. Anyways, so that's for that CPP code. Now for the actual C code. Okay. So uh, this is basically the boilerplate, I guess. So define Vecino product types, Volk implementation. Uh, I'm defining this uh, because we're we're dynamic, like we're not statically linked to the loiter. So I don't want to load the function pointers uh, there. I just want the actual PFNs, the pointer function types, um, and that's that's why I'm actually defining this. Also, Volk is I have included the headers only library, so I'm including it here. This is for MGY for some reason. Without this, it doesn't work uh, for C. Uh, so include Vulkan Vulkan dot H. So make sure to include Vulkan before Volk doll. Um, and also here I'm just including STL, including STL Vulkan, STL image, mixer, TTF, and here VKM alloc Vulkan memory allocator. Uh, of course you shouldn't uh, do the VMA implementation here because we have already included it in that CPP file before. And then here this is all you, well, most of the time you're just going to need these includes for async, although I didn't use it in this demo though, uh, but this is basically the includes that you're going to need. Uh, and here includes CMGY. Yeah, that's pretty much all you need for CMGY. This guy and this guy. And then in it, pretty basic, just include the header. And then here I have a Vulkan context struct, which contains an instance, a physical device, a device, a queue, and allocator service. As a beginner, I'm going to give you some tip here, which is to uh, go ahead and don't think about multiple queues, multiple devices, multiple surfaces, and stuff like that. Don't try to be generic, because if you go that path, it's just going to go insane. And also don't even try to go like fully cross-platform and go with the Vulcan 1.0 to just like bruh you're just gonna suffer if you're good <laughs> you know it's like as a beginner just focus on one thing and this is from my own experience focus on one thing make it work on your own machine first just make it work on your machine <laughs> that's pretty much it and basically don't try to be generic just do stuff that you need to actually make it work so here uh, although you could actually create multiple devices, multiple queues, and multiple physical devices, and crazy stuff like that, I didn't. I just like one physical device, one device, and by the way, something like WGPU just uses one queue, so <laughs> that's something to keep in mind. 
Uh, but basically the queues could be used and multiple queues and multiple devices could be used for multi-threading and crazy stuff like that. But as a beginner, you don't really need all that stuff. Uh, okay. Now here I have the struct. Please use structs for your app application. Make it uh, make uh, make it into a struct and put it in like the window, the context, etc., whatever. Uh, because you'd like to pass it around instead of having like a globals everywhere. So yeah, and try to keep the render a bit separate though uh, from your own application code. So to keep it a little bit modeler though, don't go extreme to the extreme and try to like make your render fully uh, not dependent on anything else. Like for example, don't be shy to use SDL in your own render, although SDL is not meant for that though. Uh, but you got the point, hopefully. It just makes everything much simpler and... <laughs> Anyways, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Alright, and here should close. Okay, so here I'm just loading the Vulkan library. So, this is important. You don't want to initialize Vulk directly. You wanna, like, uh, Vulkan, like SDL likes to take the wheel on this to actually load the Vulkan library for you because this is a cross-platform thing. Whenever there is something cross-platform, go for SDL. <laughs> okay, so SDL Vulkan Lloyd library, this would make sure to load the Vulkan library for you in a cross-platform way. And then here, instead of say Vulkan initialize, which would actually try to load the, the Vulkan library again by its own, which could end up in some big problem because somehow it could end up that SDL have loaded a separate library from Volk. Then you have a big problem. So make sure to say Volk initialize custom. So you could actually give it the function from the Vulkan library that you have loaded from SDL, which is this is how you basically do it. SDL Vulkan get VK uh, get instance proc ADDR. Now basically uh, Vulkan, you just take this function, you just load this function right here, Vicky gains since proc ADDR, and then you just use that to load all of the other functions. Well, not all, of course, there is some other stuff that I'm going to talk about later, but you got the point. So yeah, uh, all right, so I'm not going to go too much detail on this uh, for now, though I, I may do videos later on this. In fact, I made this template, so it's much easier to start tutorials later on, but anyways. So here you're just gonna get the instance extensions. There you go, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, have I actually improved this myself? I have, like that was my first commit to SDL, which was I'm very proud proud of. Uh, but anyways, so char extensions. Please use SDL malloc instead of malloc. Like just forget about the, the standard library if you can. Uh, just use, like most functions in the standard library are exist in SDL, uh, just use those. Uh, because they're very much customizable and yeah you just ha like have to include SDL and that's it you have all those functions just use them so, so SDL malloc there you go boom and then SDL mem copy this is because I want the extensions and also I want plus one for Mac OS Mac OS is always this the outlier which is just so stupid anyways uh, I really don't recommend <laughs> supporting macOS when you're learning, just so stupid, uh, don't even care about that. Uh, though something that you have to keep in mind that if you want to support macOS currently at, while this video have got employed, uploaded, you can only use Vulkan 1.2, uh, up to Vulkan 1.2. Uh, so Vulkan 1.3 is still not yet there and also even one Vulkan 1.2 for Mac OS there's like it's not Mac OS like official um, Mac OS have their own API called metal uh, so uh, if you want to use your application in Mac OS you're gonna use uh, what is it called molten VK which is kind of like a uh, library, a third party library that kind of mimics the Vulkan API or actually implements the Vulkan API, right? But inside the implementation, instead of driver code like you would have with official support, uh, it just translate that API calls to Vulkan, uh, to, sorry, to middle API calls, which is super inefficient, but I guess it works kind of decently. Uh, but it's still not fully confirmed, so 
So yeah, just that to keep in mind. But honestly, I really don't recommend even supporting that stupid stuff. Uh, anyways, fake create instance. As you can see, every structure have its own S type and stuff. Anyways. Uh, blah 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 whatever I'm not gonna go too much detail here yeah so as you can see after you create your instance you gotta make use of Vocaloid instance only you don't want to load the device just yet because you haven't created that though you can but you're still gonna have that overhead of the of the loiter so no just go with Vocaloid instance only so this would basically load the instance into the global scope though I don't really like the global scope but Currently, you cannot really work with multiple instances when it comes to Volk. Although you don't really need uh, multiple instances pretty much most of the time. Uh, most of the time, every application will have one, one instance. Uh, and that's basically it. And then there's Vicky enumerate physical devices. Uh, all right, so here, uh, like there is some other stuff that you have to do like enumerate physical device properly and error checking and checking if like, is this physical device good or not, etc. blah, blah, blah. As a beginner, don't go that path. It's just gonna go ahead and say, <laughs> you know, just go ahead, Vicky enumerate physical device. Take the first physical device. Here I'm just passing in one hard code in it basically and yeah and yeah, I would just get the first physical device without any questions that's it done and then create device and of course all these functions actually returns results but just to keep things simple and uh, you know very clear to reading and to learning and beginners basically I haven't included all that crazy error <laughs> error handling and stuff like that so Vicky create device and also uh, um, well the thing is, it, it's nice because you don't have to care about error, but like sometimes something doesn't work for you. But you could use Vulkan, uh, the Vulkan configurator can help with that. Like you could check the Vulkan API calls and check if that, like it is success or not and stuff like that. But either way, whatever. All right, so as you can see, macOS is making a mess here. I'm not even sure if macOS works with this, but in theory, I guess it may work. Uh, anyways, so I just recommend go with only your machine, Windows or Linux or both. Uh, even Android have its own complications, though I kind of try to uh, cover them here too. Uh, Volk load device. So as you can see here, after creating the device, I load the device in, again to the global scope. Though Volk does have that load device to extract, which would allow you to create multiple devices. Uh, but yeah, you can end up in that uh, like struct overflow because of inconsistencies. I didn't even know like w what is the problem with that. But anyways, who cares? So for now, let's just go with that because we only have one device. So then here I'm getting the device queue and then here I'm using VMA uh, to create the allocator. Here I'm just passing it physical device, device, Vulkan API version instance, blah, blah, blah. Here I'm passing it all the pointer functions that Volk have loaded uh, basically. So yeah, that's simple. Very simple though. The, the, the Vulkan functions that you need to pass would change of course from Vulkan from one Vulkan version to the other, and also depending on what is the extensions that you have, etc. Uh, so yeah, uh, right, 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 right. So bind window, okay. So why I have made this bind window in bind window, it would basically allow you to use the same renderer with multiple windows, although one at a time, though you can indeed go ahead and support multiple windows rendering at the same time, but that's complicated out of the scope of a beginner. Not too complicated, but you got the point, like, bruh. So yeah, um, and this is for the, the first one, which is to basically allow for the renderer to be used with multiple win, like with one window to the other, like basically. The other thing is that in Android, it requires you to only create the surface when you get a specific event that I'm gonna show you later on. And to actually destroy the surface, we get a specific event, <laughs> just so stupid. But yeah, you need that. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we'll see later on. So here I'm just using SDL to create the surface because creating the surface is actually platform dependent. So we're using SDL for now. 
uh, though basically after you get the surface is kind of like the 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 platform agnostic window a Vulcan window kind of thing so this is like the pattern that you're gonna notice is that every time Vulcan like tries to abstract platform agnostic stuff into some specific objects so you don't have to worry about platform agnostic stuff anymore when dealing with the window you're just gonna deal with that surface no matter what it is uh, if it's a wind like wintry to window or whatever of course, in bind window here, I'm just destroying the surface and stuff. Anyways, and I'm setting it to Vic in all handle. You could just set it to null, but yeah, just for sake of readability. SDL init. Okay, here I'm SDL init. You could init everything, or you could init just video, depending on your use case. Here, image init, same thing. You could init PNG, WebP, but of course, you have to make sure that it is supported by M E M SDL image itself first. Second, you need to make sure that it's actually enabled in the CMA configuration because you can actually enable and disable uh, specific extensions uh, in CMake. so here is the mixer for audio here I'm just like mp3 you could add some other extensions etc etc you got the point here TTF in it well SDL TTF for fonts and here in it inch lies uh, this doesn't really do anything in Linux but it does do something in Windows don't ask me what it is it just does something <laughs> Uh, either way, you have to do this. Uh, so to initialize in it and to be able to use it. Okay, so here I have my app struct. You can allocate it if you want to. Uh, anyways, depends on your use case. App dot window is the create window. There you go. I added is the window Vulcan. I always like to make my uh, windows hidden initially because I don't want the user to just see garbage in his window at first while I'm actually creating the render and stuff and preparing and stuff so I just start the, uh, the window as hidden and then once I have created my render and stuff and I'm ready to start rendering then I show the window uh, which as you're gonna see in a second here I'm as you can see creating the Vulkan context with VK API version 1.2 uh, make sure this is consistent with the other Vulkan versions that I've shown you before, whatever. And then here I'm creating the MGY context, though I didn't use MGY here. Uh, but it, yeah, that's basically the start of it. <laughs> and here, if not defined Android, basically, if we're not on Android, I'm binding the window directly after creating the context. Uh, but if you're on Android, you're going to see later what I'm going to do. And here is the show window. As you can see, we're showing the the window after we're done with all that crazy stuff all that setup now we're entering the actual render loop kind of although i didn't have any rendering yet i didn't even have swap chain and stuff like that but this is just like the start of it all uh, though later on i may do tutorials on this but anyways uh actually i do have some other tutorials previously but like tutorial uh, more c great tutorial come later on anyways so while not app dot should close uh, we're gonna basically go through all the events that we have in this frame that are available and we're gonna go through them we're gonna pull them from SDL we're gonna switch if it's quit then should close true now this is the events that I was talking about when it comes to Android though this also works on iOS I think like basically all um, mobile devices probably does this uh, pretty much but basically when you go outside of the application like to the main screen or whatever but the application is still running in the background what happens is that it would give you this um, event and at least on android you're supposed to go ahead and and bind the window at that point that's where you can actually create the surface so i'm um, here i'm saying bind window um, here we'll enter background so when we're gonna enter background when you know that the user is existing our application at that point at least in Android the surface shouldn't be used anymore it should be destroyed immediately because it's gonna become invalid so we inbind the window here basically <laughs> so yeah that's basically it. and of course before we exit the application we just wait for the device to become idle so like we don't exit the application while the GPU is doing something or something like that. Of course, you want to have like, you know, clean up stuff here and et cetera, et cetera. I didn't really add these for simplification for readability, et cetera. You got the point. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Though just for the sake of completeness, I'm gonna show you how we could use this to actually start a new project. 
So let's say new project, uh, C executable. Of course, you could use whichever ID you want. As long as you have git, you have um, a git and CMake pretty much. Yeah. Uh, of course, an internet connection because it will download everything. If you actually have noticed here, I don't include any weird stuff here like get some modules or the whole library in my code or something. Everything is very dynamic. Everything is from CMake, stuff like that, downloaded at will, you know, stuff like that. Anyways, C executable, blah, blah, blah. You can, like, you can find a lot of tutorials out there on how to start a new CMake project using VS Code or whatever. Uh, here I'm just showing you the things that you're not gonna find but anyways so SDL uh, let's say some example I don't know let's say example C23 okay and if you want to start as quickly as possible just copy this example dot CMake there you go all right just make sure to change the CMake minimum required dependent on your CMake version uh, you could take the cmic dash dash version here. This is basically the minimum cmic version you want to support. Uh, and then here there's project here. If you're gonna work with C, then go with C. If you want to go with C++, go with CXX. If you wanna go with C and C++, go with CXXX. Uh, but you got the point. Here you can set the cmic standard. There's a nicer way to do it, but for now this is fine. Here we're downloading CPM and then we're adding this my library here and you can notice here that this is the tag here I'm just using main though you could for example use the tag instead of the commit like this or for example if there's some other tags here you could just do it you know uh, but you got the point hopefully so GH of course you could learn a lot more from the CPM page and also from all the libraries that I've mentioned they have their own documentation and stuff like that uh, which I recommend you check out so at least most of them <laughs> so yeah uh, download in cpm.cmic and there you go so the wiki check this out it's also going to show you how you can install some other uh some other stuff you know all these libraries there you go nice so you could basically use cpm for all your dependencies which is pretty cool uh okay so add executable here i'm just adding my own executable main.c blah blah, blah. And now i could just do this reload cmake and you can see that it's gonna start adding uh, SDL and it's gonna add all of those libraries for you. Everything is done for you. That's pretty much it. You just add my own library. Otherwise, if you want more control maybe, uh, and you don't really like uh, a lot of the things that I have, then you can surely go ahead with, um, you know, like, let's say, Uh, like basically including this whole thing in your own uh, project uh, but you got the point so right now this is gonna install and yeah see you after that and yeah the CMake configuration is done you have downloaded everything as you can see you have configured all the projects etc it also shows you some information and stuff if you have some error please post it as an issue uh, so I can see if I can fix it uh, or if you can actually fix it yourself. So yeah, pretty much now uh, We're just gonna go ahead and basically as you can see all of this targets have been added uh, But yeah now if you go to settings though Not settings like if you are on my IDE, but basically if you go to CMake configuration like there's a lot of variables there that you could set uh, probably let's see so as you can see cache variables yeah there is all of this cool stuff here there you go so as you can see allow external spur v tools as sound lib blah, blah blah all of these configurations you could check them out uh, very interesting stuff there you go you could even enable stuff disable stuff uh, configure all sorts of crazy stuff uh, and yeah, 
that's basically it. For example, if you don't want SDL OpenGL, you could turn that off. Like you could say, um, let me show you some example maybe. Um, there's Volk stuff. There's all of these settings that you could configure. But let's see SDL render. If we could find it here somewhere. I uh, can't really. There you go. So, for example, let's say you don't want the SDL uh, render because you're not going to use it. You're going to make your own Vulkan render, your own accelerated renderer. Then you could just turn this off basically by doing this dash D SDL render equal to off. Uh, let's say you want to basically uh, link all of the libraries statically. Then there is some CMake variables. I'm not sure if all the libraries there actually confirms to this, uh, but in CMake there's this variable that you could probably yeah, there's this variable right here. So you could say build shared libs right dash d build shared libs is equal to off uh, to basically link everything statically. Hopefully as long as the library is. Uh, the libraries themselves are actually set up properly when it comes to CMake. There's also on, etc., uh, etc. Et so yeah, that's basically it, and this would just do does the job basically. So yeah, that's just something that I wanted to show you. And now, if we actually start building, it's gonna start building all of those libraries as you can see. Uh, by default, it links most of the stuff uh, shared like at least for example for SDL link like by default links it shared like links to the shared library uh, there you guys you can see right now is actually building the async though you're gonna need C++ uh, compiler for that though so yeah and yeah and right now my computer is like my CPU is going wild <laughs> of compiling there you go let's see how much it's gonna take okay async is pretty big it's like C++ what do you expect from C++ but it's pretty much the best library you could get at least open source um, when it comes to like supporting as much as as much formats as possible which you would probably need for an engine but depends of course on your own engine so yeah there you go right now we have basically in, in installed like basically built all the libraries you could find them all in the bin directory hopefully um, not sure where they are now okay there you go so here example it's called example basically okay so now what you could do for example you could the simplest way maybe to check if this all works you could go to the test let's say and you could just bring up all of these guys and just copy paste let's say and just start but you're gonna see that it tells you in the find reference to VMA create allocator because it's a header only library, you still have to include it. Uh, the implementation of it. Though you can do that of course in the C source because it's a C++ library. So what you gotta do, you gotta add a new source file. Let's call it depths, you could call it whichever one, who cares. Um, and then add this stuff here. Uh, just make sure that VMA implementation is on and basically all this stuff, right? And yeah, I'm just gonna add this to my CMake now. Uh, where's my executable? There you go. I'm just gonna add depths.cpp and that should work. Though you're gonna have some problem here actually with C. Let's see if that's the case though. Yeah, there you go. It's, it may tell you missing variable is CMake CXX compile object. Now, basically, it's telling you that like C++ is not configured in this CMake project. So what you could do, you could either add CXX here, or you could say enable language, and then say CXX. Either of these works. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. 
and let's see what's happening here hmm weird uh, main VMA create Vulcan context Yeah, you haven't found this guy for some reason. Interesting. Weird. Uh, well. Maybe this is problematic. Let's see. I mean, it works for me before, so I'm not sure what's happening here, but let's see if this would fix it. Yeah, there you go. So as you can see right now, I got my window. Of course, there's no swap chain, nothing really happening yet, but basically this should be the boilerplate setup almost kind of uh, but yeah uh, pretty much though that wasn't my own fault it's pretty much just x11 going crazy <laughs> but anyways so here as you can see all of this cool stuff actually works pretty amazing and so yeah that's that's pretty much it like really and you can notice here that I the KHR versions of these didn't work because basically these are probably uh, promoted to core. You could learn about that uh, about that more in Google or the Vulcan spec, etc. Uh, so I shouldn't use KHR anymore. I should use the actual uh, actual functions without the KHR, basically. Uh, suffix so yeah that I think that was it for this video uh, thank you for watching everyone and see you in the next one goodbye peace